All right. Hey guys, William Saunders here. And I wanted to cover a very, you know, um, interesting topic that I've been getting, especially lately. Okay. So account versus fund management. All right. So let's go over the differences, the truth, and the reality behind these practices and services. All right. Okay. So let's start, guys, with outrageous claims. You guys will not believe the things that I've seen. I heard a person come into my inbox with my Instagram account, and they're telling me that someone told them that they can actually take $100 into about $1,300 within 14 trading days, okay? So I want you guys to use common sense. This is not high-yield investing portfolios in HIPAA, okay, whatsoever. Matter of fact, you guys should not look for any type of high gains and everything like that when it comes to your capital being invested because high gains usually typically comes with higher risk. And if the risk is not higher, then understand that it's a specialty service which costs real money to work with those type of regulated and successful organizations, all right? So I want you guys to keep that in mind when you're coming up with these outrageous claims about flipping money. Now, the other aspects is the value of time, okay? So realistically speaking, with a current skill set, such as, you know, one that is very accustomed with the market, yes, they can take $100 into 1300 within two weeks yes but understand this why would someone in prime example like myself take your 100 dollars and grow it into 1300 when i can do that with my own money okay in fact i can do a thousand dollars and grow it into 13,000 in the same time so it's no point in sitting there doing it with your 100 dollars okay or should i say there's a proper way to go about managing a account size that is not worth me actually physically managing that account okay you guys got to also consider the value of your time how long of a duration are you guys expecting to see a return on investment okay so let's be very realistic about it even though results would be made all right you guys should also take into consideration the long-term advantage, okay? So what's going to happen once your maturity has hit a ROI, all right? So are you guys working with someone that's been in the industry for many years or is this just someone that kind of comes and goes, okay? You guys got to really keep that in mind. Some of the most best financial institutions have been around for easy two to 300 years, guys, okay? This is the banking system. This is the insurance companies. These guys that really deal with long-term wealth and generational growth have been in the business for a very long time, okay? So when you guys look into long-term advantage, you guys gotta think about, are you positioning yourself to where this opportunity would last, you know, a few months, a couple of weeks? A couple of years like you guys got to think about the real long term and what's going to happen afterwards okay all right so let's talk about the legitimacy and also the legality okay so it's pretty much one and the same and very similar all right so account management okay these are traditionally done with a trade copier a pam or a mam account okay now, trade copiers usually allow you to keep whatever broker you want, and you get to control all of the risk factor and control everything about any little detail, okay? And that's what trade copiers are for. Now, normally with a PAM or MAM account, you have to use their selected broker or platform. And it's essentially set up kind of like an umbrella account where you still can control some features and everything like that or whatever. So you still have access to your capital. Okay. Now, the differences in regards to the way that these operate and fees, then that's a determining factor to which one you would actually want to use as well. Okay. Now, fund management typically is licensed or regulated to some degree. All right. You guys got to understand that. They can be public or private, and fund management usually house the entire capital, okay? So that means they control everything. They control the withdrawals, they control the risks, they control everything. The only way you would be able to get access to your capital is actually through the fund, okay? That's the only way. 
And the reason being is because it's a different professional, more experience, and they have to go over different things when it comes to fund management. All right. So once again, two different perspectives. One deals with a lot of legality, paperwork and everything like that when it comes to fund management and account management, not so much. Okay. Now, the other factor that I've heard is people actually giving out their account login details to manage accounts. Okay. Now that is a very great area and understand that that in some degree can go against the terms of your actual broker. Okay. So you guys got to be mindful about that. Even if you guys both actually agree and everything of that sort. All right. So let's go over fees, compensations, and even some earnings. All right. So for the most part, once again, two different things that's going on. So account management. In some cases, there's little to no upfront fee. Okay. And that's because a lot of it is a duplicated process. And there's not much that they really have to kind of set up besides you creating your own brokerage account. Now, usually profit sharing, meaning that the gains that's actually up on that account that's being managed is going to be split or that is the service fee. Okay. So typically they take 30 to 50% of the earnings. All right. And that's usually when you're going with a PAM or MAM account setup. Now, if you guys are usually going with trade copiers, they do a flat monthly rate, no matter what the gains are. Okay. And you guys would be able to use essentially any broker that you actually want. So that monthly rate would be more than likely a higher upfront cost to set up the trade copier. And when you're sticking with the account management down to this degree, you guys are typically going to still cover all of the trader fees. Okay. Unless they've agreed to opt you out of some of those fees, which in most cases they won't. So this means you guys still have to handle your taxes with your broker, okay? And you're stuck with everything else, withdraw fees, commission fees, swap, everything that's dealing on with your trading account, okay? Now, fund management is entirely different. There is a new account setup fee. And let me tell you guys, when a new account comes through a fund, they're going through a very thorough process, okay, with that new account. They're going through a attorney to set up this new account deed and contract. They're going through with a full risk management team. They're going through with a analytical team in regards to understanding the potential of that account. And they just have kind of like a lot of major pieces that take part in that new account being set up and also the longevity success of that account, okay? So you're not just paying for one part or one service. You're paying for many things to actually come together and to position everything with a successful formula, all right? Now, fund management typically does profit sharing uh, ranging from 10% to 50% depending on your balance size and depending on the fund, all right? Most of the times, you can get fund management that will just agree to an annual return rate of anywhere from 30% to 200%. And let's say they take out anything outside of whatever the terms would be. Okay, so if you go into a fund and you're saying, well, projected is about 40% each year, and that's the average, what you can kind of predict that you will have at the end of the year. Okay, now, of course, anything over outside of that is what that fund would actually make. Okay. And then once again, a fund is very professional. So there's going to be attorneys involved. There's going to be contracts and agreements involved. There's going to be investment statement or portfolio statistics involved, taxes and everything to that degree. Okay. Because they're housing every single thing. And it's completely different when you're in charge of your own capital compared to when someone else is in charge of your capital. Okay. That changes the laws dramatically when it comes to account management compared to fund management. So once again, investment sizes for account management, typically you can go with a hundred to a thousand dollars because once again, it's your own broker that you have set up You're using either a trade copier or PAM or MAM account. So you guys can pretty much just start very, very small and really go from there. So we can do 3,500 plus, 10,000 plus, 25,000 plus. It's entirely up to you and your broker 
but I would heed you guys that once you kind of get around the 10 and $25,000 amount for account management, that you guys should definitely have someone that's already overseen your risks and stats to ensure that your current settings are most effective, okay? Now, in most cases, you're in charge of your actual risk that you select, but being that the balances are starting to go into the five-figure mark, they should still come around and make sure that you have everything set up and you're using the appropriate risk, even though you are in charge of your own settings. OK, so that's the difference with smaller accounts starting off typically towards larger accounts. So they should be able to give you guys a call or just kind of just give you guys a head up about what you should be doing with five figure balances and higher. Now, fund management, depending on the fund, they work with a starting range of five figures, some six figures figures and I can tell you there is many who start off at seven and eight figures okay and once again in order to work with the fund and they're taking in large investments they would really look into your net worth to make sure that you're able to invest properly or that would be included in their disclosure once you go over your contract agreement and don't be surprised if they also want to verify your identity and inquire about where you've gotten the money from to invest into their their fund okay because once again this is entirely professional and they're under some type of regulation or license all right so I hope you guys understand the difference between account management and fund management okay and why it may be best to use a trade copier compared to a PAM or MAM account and how some could actually charge upfront and why they would need to charge upfront and the different profit sharing rates that they go about Okay. All right, guys. So keep in touch with me. I have tons of goodies that I'm spreading out on my social media channels. Just to inform you guys. I love the questions that you're asking. So keep them in. Very grateful for you guys. And I'm here to lead you guys in the right direction. Whether you guys are new to my channel or not, whether we've spoken on a social media platform or not, I'm just here to guide you guys and build great relationships. Okay. So if you guys are interested in high quality, account management or fund management, then I'm connected to some of the best account managers, some of the best hedge funds, and I can get you guys exactly where you need to go and what you need within a secure, safe manner, okay? So there would be a link down below and you guys can just reach out to me and let me know pretty much what you need and we can really go from there, all right? So I wish you guys much success and of course, happy trading.